Good morning. We've got overcast skies, cool temperatures, and rain on the way. But hey, let's go play with that fin. Um, them guys are supposed to meet me over there at 8 o'clock. Like I said, I'm sure they've got to set that planter up um, as far as doing whatever they do for that plot to it. So I'm not sure. I mean, it'll probably be an hour or two before they get started. But hopefully we can get that field planted. It's a 65-acre field. And uh, hopefully we can get that done before the rain starts. But my dad's going to run me down to get the tractor. Last night, whenever I got down, there wasn't anyone to give me a ride. So I just left it down there in the field. So I want to get it up here. I guess dad had some GPS issues last night. Something about his RTK bridge wasn't working properly or something. So the guy put that in is coming down to take a look at it this morning. Maybe we should leave this thing out tonight, let it get rained on. Maybe we'll wash some of that dust off. I've got to get up there to that tractor. Fun fact, I have the Fent keys. That key has, or that tractor has some kind of protection package where only this key will start it. Most tractors, if you have a John Deere key, it'll start about every John Deere. It used to be if you had it. But if you got a Challenger key, it'll start about every Challenger of that series. Apparently not with the fence. The Agco guys are here um, trying to get this thing set up. I don't believe uh, they've calibrated the GPS or anything like that. So probably have to do a couple of GPS calibrations. Uh, they're still getting that 2020 set up. This is all brand new, so I'm pretty sure they just, I'm thinking they just installed it and then well, before, right before they brought it down here. So it's going to be a little bit of stuff like that to do to it. And uh, then hopefully we can get this thing going before it rains. I'm sitting there looking at this, I still can't figure out how you take this unit off here, so I'm gonna see if I can get Craig. Craig's the uh, Craig's the actual only actual Agco guy here. Um, the other two guys, Steve and Jason, are from Ohio Ag Equipment. So see if we can get him to show us how to take this unit apart. All right, we're taking this off. We'll just pull the electronics out here, pull our hoses off. Slide up. And now it's off. Yeah, watch your head there. And then there's two, two clips right here. Just hit these clips. And there you go. There's your sheet plate and there's your singulator. If you need to change those, pull the pin out there and okay, change so, plates. So you're saying to go to beans, you gotta, I see this one says corn, there's a yep. bean singulator then? Correct. Okay. And then you'd have a different plate here for beans. Okay. Is this a thing you unhook? Is that the electric drive for the? Yep, okay. that's the electric drive. It looks so small. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 nice. Yeah. A lot less going on versus a ground drive and yep. a hydraulic drive. It just makes the planter look really clean. Yep. Saying one other thing, if you do have seed in there, there's a clean out at the bottom here. And that'll okay. clean out is your Is there anything hopper. else you have to adjust on the unit or is that pretty much it? That is it. I mean once you set the air pressure, I mean you're good. You don't have to adjust the air pressure again. It's it's set for the day. Okay. And the good thing about the precision planning and having the 2020, if there is an issue, you see it right away. What row it is, if you see singulation errors right there, all of a sudden singulation on one row is 95%. You know, hey, I should probably stop, take a look at it. Maybe have something in there that's plugging it up. Wait, you it. guys stop before it quits planting? What do you mean? You guys stop before it quits planting completely? That's weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Still doing some GPS calibrations right now, getting ready to do a, I think it's called a roll calibration. Basically they put a stake in a certain place, turn the tractor around, plant back in, or drive back into it. Make sure you're basically coming back on the same spot. Yeah, that's fine. Turns out when a planter's never been in the dirt, you actually gotta adjust the markers. Right now they're still uh, calibrating things. I mean, they're not planting yet or anything. But that is the first time that planter has ever been in the dirt, so that's kind of cool. Well, I think they've got all their calibrations done. They asked me to go get the seed, ready to fill this planter up. We're not going to fill it all the way up, but we're going to put enough seed to plant this field and see if we can get started. Unfortunately, there is rain coming, so see what we can get done. Must be a little bit taller than the John Deere planter or the box anyway. The end that has on his tender that really reached all that well. So we improvised. Threw up on the pallet. Is that the Gen 3 2020? 
That is Gen 3 2020. Um, so what we got here is a 9816 white planter with uh, precision technology stuff on it, uh, the V drive, the Delta downforce, and then the 2020 the Gen 3 in here for controlling it. Now do all white planters run through a 2020 or can you run it through the Accu terminal? So it depends on the white planter right at the moment. Uh, you've got a choice on the planter if you go with the VE model. VE stands for vacuum electric which is going to be your precision meter which is going to be running your 2020. Okay. Um, if you go with the standard the original white meter then that would be an ISO controller and then that could be run through the terminal. Okay. It's on the delta downforce and the alternator, which is driving the electric meters. Oh, okay. The second one here is going to be a center fill, and the third one is vacuum. So we got three okay. on constant flow. Okay, are the vacuums both running off the same remote though? Uh, both right and left are on the same remote, yes. Okay. I don't know, it'd be pretty sweet if we could plant 30. I don't know if I'd want to do 30. I don't know if I want to sit in here with you, but <laughs> we get some acres done if you can hang on. I think we need to adjust our marker. You guys see the marker? So it looks like row what is that, 13, 12, row 12. It's in plant populations off a little bit. So now we need to determine why that is. So we're getting a double and a skip on one. Yeah. That's pretty neat seeing how it does. Well, your your uh, skips are three percent, multiple to none. So our seed blockage was uh, just a piece stuck to the meter. Wasn't yep. It? So we came out here, checked, pulled the meter part on twelve, and there was just a little piece of corn stuck in one of the, the holes here. So every time we went around, it was getting a skip. So and that was stuck. I was throwing singulation and population. I think I seen population down to 32,000, yep. yep. 32,500, and singulation was down to 96. Right, because so. there was no multiples, it was just showing skips. So was, that's probably what it was. We'll check it and try it. Go from there. I can't tell. It's trying to rain. You guys are going to see the new precision planting aqua planter. It's a joke. It's just a joke. We're starting the actual plot now. The first three passes was just kind of getting the planter set and uh, making the headlands. But. So now we're going to do uh, start with uh, downforce settings. We'll start with light downforce settings, then do normal and then heavy. Uh, we'll make one pass each for each of them, and we'll set up a different hybrid for each of those. So when we come back to harvest, it will be able to track uh, what we what we planted there. Yeah. Yep. This will definitely be interesting in about two, three months, definitely be able to see something. So basically we're picking up, uh, we're picking up about 100, about 50 pounds on each row unit. So we're actually lifting the row units a little bit. Last pass was kind of trying to simulate maybe a planter with spring, uh, spring downforce. It's basically just the weight of the row unit as the downforce. margin there is how much force is uh, being applied to that row unit. All right, on this pass we're doing heavy down force. Now one thing I learned at the Agco crop tour last year was that when you don't have uh, delta down force or hydraulic down force, running heavier down force is better than running lighter down force. So we'll see, but like we were talking, the soil is pretty, uh, it's kind of wet. I mean, it's not too wet, but we'll just have to see. This will be interesting. All right, now we're going to do a planting depth adjustment. Uh, we were planting at two inches, now we're going to switch to half the planter to one inch and half the planter to one and a half. So on the white row units with the depth adjustment, you can see on the sides here, they're marked, uh, you got your depth marked on the side. One, two, three, four. You want to do a half an inch, you can 
is at it there. And then there's an uh, adjustment calibration to it. So during the pre-delivery setup, you can set it to two inches and know when you set it to two inches here, you're exactly planting two inches. Yeah, you actually got to calibrate your right. gauge wheels. To right, you calibrate the gauge wheels during the setup and then uh, you're good to go. Otherwise, you could be saying two inches, but that don't mean anything. It's right. an arbitrary number. Yep. On this pass, we're doing another plant depth test. This is at two and two and a half inches. Now on this pass, we're going to put the planter back to two inches, which is where we usually like to plant at. We're going to adjust the row cleaners. Is half the planter going to have row cleaners down, have them all the way up? Yeah. Okay, so that'll be simulating a planter without row cleaners, basically. Uh, these are Yetters, Yetter row cleaners. They are an option on the white planters. And, uh, see what, what kind of difference they make. Turns out them shark tooth row cleaners bite. So like I said, on this pass here, we've got uh, half the row cleaners up in the air and half of them are uh, down in the float position running like they should be. Here you can really see the difference with the row cleaners versus the non-row cleaners. Now, as far as uh, the seed going in the ground, I mean, it doesn't look like it did. It looks like it still planted it fine. But I mean, you can clearly tell where the row, uh, row cleaners go across the ground at. And it almost looks like we strip tilted or something. This one's a skip. This is a double. This is a double. Oh, it's all not on the yeah. And on this pass, we're doing a simulated skip on half the planter. Just, yeah, they have a goofy plate in them that's going to simulate skips. Now they're half simulating doubles, is that right? Correct. So we're going to make it plant like a deer planter. <laughs> Now our deer planter has precision meters on it. So. See, there you go, that's already good then. <laughs> this is behind the scenes stuff. Hours spent changing monitor settings. <laughs> All right, everything's going good. We're getting lots of singles and double alarms going off, but we also got an alarm that we forgot to plug uh, one of the rows back in when we switched the plates. Yep, yep we're good now. So, the right half of the planter is showing uh, doubles right now, and the left half of the planter is showing skips. So you can see how it's changing the population there. If we look at our population, it's still 36.5 or 33.5 is what we're trying to plant for. But the, the skips and the doubles over here are uh, much higher. Steve, how do those come out of that quick? Just a quick. Just a uh, quick clip. The here new last year, the white planter started coming with the quick attach from the factory. So if you want to keep and seed firmers, all you got to do is buy this and then clip right in. All this precision stuff on this planter and all this mapping, and we're still putting out stakes. <laughs> yeah. All right, Craig here was just telling me that with the white planters, being that white owns precision, I'm guessing that's why they're equipped like this now. But yep. So from the factoring, the backbone harness is on there, and the, all there's an SRM for every row. So say this year you wanted to buy a new planter, but it wasn't in your budget to do say speed tube or smart firmers. Now that you have all that on there already, all it is is you add that on there and it plugs right into there's a little jumper and you add that to it and then you can add smart firmers you can add v v apply you can add um, speed tube all those extra features you have i mean the base of it's all already there you're just kind of plugging and play from there adding all the wirings the fun yeah part. all the wirings the, no, that's the, the fun part for us <laughs> yeah uh, sarcasm <laughs> Think of the new 2020. Dad just rode around and uh, that he just got done planting across the road here. Well, if you get it all figured out, just all new. Looks like I do a lot more. All right, these last passes we're doing here are population tests. I'm pretty sure we're going uh, eight rows at 29,000, eight rows at 31, maybe, and 33, 36, and 38, or so, somewhere in there. We're doing some population tests. Another thing that will be interesting to see in this plot 
is uh, with this planter having electric drives, it has turn compensation, meaning that as you're making a turn, these outside, let me think about this, these outside units are speeding up while these inside units that aren't moving as far, covering as much ground, slow down so you don't have a high population on the inside with a low population on the outside. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, maybe we just have to go to a corner of the field to see that. Okay, the plot is planted. We still have roughly 35, 36 acres of this field left. So I'm in the seat now. And uh, it's, it's pretty similar to the, the Challenger that I plant with. The only thing different is this, uh, this joystick, the Fent joystick. It's uh, got more functionality to it. And I've never used a 2020 before, so that's interesting to see. in here now uh, this 722 fit uh, so the armrest is very similar to the thousand series challenger but I definitely like the thousand series better the cab's bigger and there's a little bit more engine noise in this cab which I think this might be an older design cab but the thousand series is definitely the cat this doesn't go here I gotta say, I'm really liking this uh, this joystick a little bit more than the one in the Challenger. It's probably one of the main things I like better about this tractor. That's about the only difference, also, other than the smaller cab. But uh, there's a lot more functionality on here. At first, I look at that and I'm thinking there's just too much going on, but uh, you get used to it pretty quick, I do believe. And I don't know if we're gonna make it or not. Uh, rain's definitely coming. My wife is in town at uh, one of our kids' baseball games, and they just got rained out, and that's only about 10 minutes away from here. So. I like that, uh, I like that 2020. The thing is, uh, looks a lot better than Dad's 2020, the older stuff. The rain is a coming. Uh, we're not going to get done. I can see the rain over there. That's unfortunate. Um, like I said, this is a crop tour plot for Ohio Ag and Agco. There are two more plots that they're putting in in Lima and Napoleon. So if you're in those areas of Ohio, uh, go ahead and check them out. And there's the raindrops. Oh, no. Oh, it just rained real hard for about a minute. Uh, it's, it's let up now, so maybe I can at least make it back to the other end of the field. And after that, it's probably going to be it, because there's definitely more rain coming. Apparently that rain was just kidding because they quit. I'm still making dust. There's no, no mud sticking to anything yet, so we're going to keep going. Although more drops are hitting the tractor now. I'd say it's just a matter of time. We're still going. We've uh, planted 57 acres. There's roughly 64 acres in this field. We're almost down to the point rows, but I can see in there's still rain coming, so that's not good. This is probably the only day this uh, tractor and planter is going to be here. So I really want to at least get these point rows done. I probably should have went and done them first. Because this uh, planter has individual row shutoffs, which is nice. Our, our corn planter has every two. But also, our corn planter doesn't have a boundary in here, so the shutoffs aren't going to work in here anyways. So. Uh, rain's coming. I gotta say one thing about this planter, it's really nice to plant without a monitor beeping at you every 30 seconds. As I say that the monitor beeps, of course it does. That's a wrap. It's raining. We're getting to, uh, we got 100 feet to the end, that's it. Well guys, that's gonna be it for the white planter and the Fent tractor. Fortunately we did get rained out. We had about three acres left to go. Uh, pretty much quit rain now but it rained pretty hard the field's pretty tacky now so um, if it didn't rain anymore we could plant the rest of it tomorrow but it looks like it's going to rain for the next three or four days so I have to see we do have a little bit of seed in that so maybe if we can get it maybe if it dries out before they have to come get it we can use it again I don't know they are going to use that tractor and planter to plant those other two uh, plots I was telling you about so it is going to be leaving here soon but uh Thanks, Ohio Ag, for bringing that down. Um, looking forward to seeing this plot and everything. So that should be exciting. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Brian's Farm Videos and Facebook at Brown Farms. Be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we'll see you in the next video.